And then I start the sharing my screen. Okay, so now you see uh, uh, the PowerPoint. First slide, welcome to Bio320. My name is Kim Tae Kim. I came from South Korea probably 26 years ago. And I did my PhD degree uh, at Florida State University, the football school, basically. Nowadays, the, the legendary coach Bobby, Bobby Bowden uh, is gone, so they're not doing very well these days, but still. And uh, my office room is 223, and my email address is kkim uh, missourystate.edu. So first of all, I want to share uh, syllabus information. So uh, I hope that you are able to see this, my uh, syllabus. So I actually indicated important sentences and information in yellow. So you should be able to see the key things that you don't want to miss. Obviously, this lab is intended to uh, give you a lot of uh, basic and conceptual and practical information about uh, topics related to cellular and molecular biology. And obviously, this lab portion will contribute nearly, I would say, 35 to 38 percent of total grade of your uh, cell biology total course. We have a four lab exams. You will see a little bit later. The lab exam will be tied to lecture exam. And we have 12 lab quizzes. And we have a number of lab homework. Basically, you, you will see lab handouts. Each lab handout has some a set of questions you want to answer and submit that. I'll give you more detailed information about how you submit your homework. And we have two lab reports uh, and one presentation. And in order to do well in this course, you should be able to pre-study. What I mean by that is read uh, handout, uh, every handout in advance coming to the class. And I usually give five to 10 minute or sometimes 15 minute introduction uh, before we do some lab, whether it's online or it's in-person class. So as I said, my name is Kyung Tae Kim. And it's easiest way that you can call me Dr. Kim. When you send me email or you just want to have a, whatever reason you want to talk to me, Dr. Kim is easiest way. And my office hours will be Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday specific time written here. And I prefer this semester even you asking some study guide related questions. I prefer you wanna do a Zoom meeting, right? You, I, but that's not necessarily mean that I'm not gonna do in person. I'll do in person, but I prefer Zoom meeting. And if you send me email, normally I, I will be responding to any email within 24 hours, but this is a bare minimum, you know, but I usually respond email within an hour. So I'm expecting that. But if you send me email Saturday, Sunday, I'll probably give 24 to 48 hours. All right, so it's uh, how to communicate. And lab TA, main TA will be Min, Zhang. And then we have uh, sometime uh, Hushrip Rizvanovic. Uh, he will be helping a little bit, not necessarily serving as TA. Uh, almost all time Min will serve him. And some important information. So when you're coming next week, uh, I know half of you coming next week. Right? So you will be uh, wearing mask. How you're wearing mask is here. Must worn over the nose and mouth. You cannot do this. For example, this is my mask. You cannot do this. Neither that. So it has to be completely covering nose and mouth. And if you have any uh, uh, problem with your respiratory system, uh, uh, then you might want to go to Disability uh, Resource Center and then get some kind of permission without masking come to class. Once you come to the class with this kind of uh, uh, disability notice, and you will be sitting nearly at the uh, end of the corner, right? And then if you're now following general policy of Missouri State University masking policy, unfortunately, our departmental chair and dean of the college will be administratively dropping you from the lab course. And if you, before you come into the class next week, I'll send this message here. Uh, you'll get this message through announcements. So I'm gonna quickly reading this. 
in an effort to making the learning environment as safe as possible this fall. Missouri State University has COVID masking policy. Masks are required to be properly worn in all academic buildings, even in the hallways, elevators, classroom, restroom, study areas, basically everywhere in the black building. Our class is located in an academic building, and so you wear a mask. So same story, if you not wear a mask without appropriate reason, then you will be dropped. Okay, so what happened? We have uh, some, some kind of a, a terrible situation happen again, like happened in the spring 2020. Just like, you know, influenza virus plus coronavirus together ramping on, you know, Springfield, Green County, then maybe we have to shut down the university. As of now, we don't think, but it could happen any moment. Then what happened? We'll do completely online, even though it's lab, we'll do online. So we'll use most likely Zoom or uh, Collaborate Ultra, that's backup plan. And what else? Uh, some questions here. Uh, instruction will be delivered through Zoom and then I'll also make a video or lecture, uh, the recorded video and then you know, provide you. How will I turn in homework? And you will find out this, and I already stated somewhere else in syllabus, more detail about that. So most likely you get the assignment then and submit through Blackboard, right? Exams will be uh, going through with Blackboard Responders Lockdown Browser. I think Dr. Duram already mentioned about this and lecture exam and lab exam will be tied. So you not get separate lab exam. And what else? Required technology. I think I'm so glad that you are able to able to connect to this, you know, lecture because using whether it's wireless or you know plugged in kind of a stuff, uh, we're going to using Zoom and responders lockdown. And face to face lab will be Temple 244. Uh, you guys uh, come in 10 a.m. right? Uh, room 244. But I tell you a little bit again when I talk about lab schedule. Half of you come in next week and the rest of them coming following next week. So I'll talk about that. Online lab, eight times. Uh, In-person lab will be eight times. Lab exam will be tied. I already talked about it. I'm gonna move on. Quizzes, we have 12 quizzes and quizzes will be found on online quizzes on your Blackboard. The Blackboard uh, course name is this. So it's cellular and molecular biology section 001 and 02 for 2020. So uh, first quiz will be administered uh, through Blackboard uh, that we found on Tuesday, August 25th, uh, starting from 6 a.m. to basically uh, midnight. So you have, uh, I don't know how many hours, 16, 18 hours of window that you should be able to finish your lab with your uh, you know, lockdown browser. Okay, so uh, lab PowerPoint slide will be available through Blackboard, same. And sometimes I have annotated, uh, you know, noted stuff. You can see sometimes you don't have any notes because some lectures are very straightforward. You don't need any notes. Okay, lab, I said two lab report and one uh, presentation. So let me talk about lab report one. It was 25 points. And it'll be covering lab two to eight. So next week will be covered. And main topic of lab report one is mammalian cancer cell culture project. So you actually learning hands-on, you know, knowledge and, uh, and, you know, on how to culture mammalian cells and how to test, you know, cellular uh, or impact of certain chemotherapeutic agent on cell proliferation or cell growth uh, or, or reactive oxygen stress and uh, cellular debt, right? So we'll talk about that kind of stuff. And when you're ready to submit this, you will have to include sections of here, title and the introduction, material method, result and discussion and references. So it's basically like a typical, you know, published paper type of format. And uh, I strongly encourage you when you come to the in-person class uh, to have a good uh, collaboration with your neighbor and so that you can share identical data sets 
but uh, your, you have to write up your report independently, right? So uh, lab reports can be submitted to Blackboard assignment section. Uh, I can show you my Blackboard here. So this is your, I mean, can you see my Blackboard? Okay, so if you see here lab handout assignment, right? So if you usually click here, you see all the assignments and along with the homework, you can just download it, right? So that you can do. And uh, what else? We have a lab report two will be about covering protein quantification, SDS gel, and protein, protein weight determination, covering lab nine to 12, right? So the, basically the format will be very similar to the lab one and also submit through Blackboard. Research presentation at the end of the you know, semester of the class, I'll ask you to group, make a group of three or four students, and then you wanna you know, presenting Zoom uh, presentation. So we'll be coordinating well so that uh, every individual of your group will be you know, having an equal amount of experience in terms of presenting time. So when I, uh, when, when we're approaching a time for this presentation, I'll ask you to choose write research paper, not review papers. A lot of people get confused about the difference, knowing the difference between review paper versus you know, research papers. Review papers does not have results and methods, but here, uh, typical research papers containing uh, all those sections, like such as results and methods. So um, I need, those results sections. And uh, we have homeworks. Every homework will be five points, grading zero to five, and min will be grading this. And lab attendance policy, if you have any situation with the COVID, please call me or send me email so that you will be uh, excused. And if you have any situation in family emergency, uh, or if you have important interviews for job or getting uh, into admitted into professional schools, please let me know. Right? Without uh, appropriate excuse, if you miss the class, then we'll, you will be penalized by deducting 10 points. If you're missing one without notice, 10 point deduction. Twice, 20. Three, 30 point. If you're missing four times, somehow you, you, lost, you lose 100 points deduced from your final grade. And here again, very important. If you are feeling ill or have any COVID symptom, don't come to the class, but you still have to send me email. So this will be blended lab. So you should be able to, able to use reliable computer internet access. You did very well this morning. And if you somehow you not, you don't have you know, lab computer, you know, laptop or a home computer that are not able, not able to connect to the internet, please come, you know, uh, go to the campus library. So that's one option. And whenever you do your lab homework, right? So if you just download document, like Word document, if you type in there, you can submit kind of document, right? Doc format. But if you love to write using your pen on pa you know, papers, you do that, you can do that. And then if you just submit that kind of, uh, you know, homework, I strongly recommend you using download or should download Genius Scan, right? I think my, my son taught me how to do this. Uh, basically, you can you know, Google and go Genius Scan and download, and then you can scan it using this kind of a software. And then submit as a you know, kind of a PDF or JPEG, right? So then it should work. And if you haven't never used you know, Lockdown Browser, I think you might want to read this section very, very carefully. There is an introductory video here and there's a quick start guide. So you go step by step, you should be able to practice this and then eventually we'll do that. Once you do all these, right, on the day of exam or on the day of quizzes, you should be able to read all these policies. Uh, we try to do minimize cheating. That's why we do this, right? Uh, particularly, uh, if I wanted to show you a little bit, uh, we have an online uh, 
uh, quizzes. Let me see online quizzes. We don't have online quizzes yet, but there is one uh, kind of a responders lockdown practice question that has five questions and the questions are very straightforward and easy. Right now, as of now, we have two uh, you know, students participated in already. And I hope you are participated in this testing whether your browser works or not, right? So it's in here, online quizzes. Okay, so I hope you to read all these policy. And I, I also believe that because you are juniors and seniors or even graduate students, you must practice this uh, software last semester. And that's what I said, you have about a few questions and you can complete this and submit. This is now very important, uh, lab schedule. So Temple Hall room 244 has about 24 students can sit. But uh, city and county orders uh, recommend that uh, we use 50% capacity. So next week, I wanna have a 12 student out of you to join the, uh, the lab, right? So how, so in your case, oh, do I have to go to next week or the, the week after next week? Well, I tell you here. So next week is August 25th, right? So next week, we'll do some hands-on lab, like a mammalian cell culture, basic. So we start subculturing of cancer cells. So this uh, subculturing involving detaching, counting, and seeding of cell. So I want student whose last name, uh, starting with the spelling of A, right, A through M-A-R, in case of uh, section one. So you know that your name is, you know, starting with this. So 12 students will be attending August 25th. And then your last name starting after like MI, right? MI will be showing up September 1, September 1. So basically August 25th, September 1, we cover the same material. So uh, you, if you really wanna come September 1, September 1 even though you, you are belong to August 25, so group A, you're not, you're not gonna come to September. We don't have space. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so make sure that. And you know, you should know that whether you are belonging to group A or group B, right? So if you have any questions like, oh, I don't know which group I'm belonging to, let me know right now. So I have a question. Yep. Um, so how would the quizzes work since we're having classes where for two weeks it's the same class? Would right. we have quizzes each week or quizzes once every two weeks for classes that are like that? So, um, you know, quiz questions are, you know, kind of a combination of uh, lecture uh, questions and lab questions. So Dr. Durham and I have to coordinate quite well so that we can you know, um, manage so that nobody will be getting this benefit, right? Uh, so um, you know, all quizzes are online. So uh, we'll probably, if there's some situations happen, we'll probably give a window of online quizzes like more than a week. So does it make sense? Yes, okay. thank you. So we'll coordinate that. So by the way, today is August 18th, so I need to talk about this a little bit. So today's online that everybody will be attending. So that's why we have uh, 24 students. And you know, I'll tell you a little bit later, we have a few things have to do. Uh, at the end of the class, I'll tell you that, oh, one homework is you complete city biosafety training. Uh, by August 25th, you have to finish and submit your certificate, right? through online, meaning online means Blackboard. So where you can find out, it's actually here, uh, here. For example, lab handout assignment. If you're looking at it here, second section, uh, so third section is city biosafety training certificate, right? So if you click here, you should be able to go, you know, oh yeah, you have to sign in and stop, right? So it's online training. So 
get the certificate and submit it. And also you, by August 25th, you have to submit a cell biology lab safety. That's also found in here, lab handout assignment. So sign lab safety rules. You can print it out. It's right there. It, it'll be like this. And you go there at the bottom of this you know, page, you have a full name and signature, right? So you do this. And then you have a lab homework, that's lab assignment. Uh, I'll talk about this a little bit later. So you have three things to do. And what else we have to talk about? Lab schedule, I want you to read carefully, step by step. And uh, I'm gonna skip this. If you're sick, I will talk about a few times. Uh, you're not gonna use cellular uh, phone uh, during the uh, lab time, obvious. I don't need to repeat that. But sometimes when you wanna, you know, use this uh, cell phone as a calculator or a timer or a digital camera, I'm okay to, to you guys using that. And your laptop, uh, some of you already using laptop, uh, highly recommend it, particularly, you know, processing your data, we need your uh, computer uh, or laptop. What else? Um, during you do in-person, face-to-face uh, -face lab, uh, I understand that if you're making a mistake or two mistakes, it could happen, but if you make a mistake over and over consist, you know, constantly, <laughs> uh, then it's gonna be a problem, right? So uh, that's the kind of stuff. And then hand washing is very important, particularly in the, in the era of COVID pandemic, right? And uh, particularly your kind of pens and notes, you don't wanna share. Uh, and no food or drink is allowed. What else? Uh, you know, particularly when you do in-person class, you know, some students, they are really uh, finishing their homework or their, their, their job duty really quickly. Then they may say, oh, Dr. Kim, I'm pretty much done. I, I wanna leave now, is it possible? You know, instead of you just do that, I, I really want to ask you to help your fellow members because a lot of students learn through peer teaching. So if you've done well your job, please help your neighborhood, right? That's my recommendation. Uh, once you've done your old job and then you, as a group, I maybe release you guys, then you might have to clean up your space. And during in-person class, not only online, but in-person in class, if you speak too loud and long and bothering too much, you know, nearby people, it's gonna be considered as a disruptive behavior. So, and uh, netiquette, always, this is online and uh, blended. Sometimes, you know, you have to go to core rules of netiquette, you know, MSU page and read through that. And so that you're gonna be a nice uh, citizen for this class. Uh, Lockdown, lockdown browser will be serving as online proctor exam, exam proctor. Uh, the university and myself and uh, everybody in our class should not discriminate on basis of race and color and religion and sex and national origin, ancestry, age and disability or veteran status. And also we strongly uh, discourage prohibited, uh, you know, uh, discouraging sex discrimination in this class. Disability situation, you go to uh, the center, Disability Resource Center. I don't wanna go through academic dishonesty. Probably you gone through this probably 50 times, last three to four years. And class behavior, we already covered. Uh, and uh, we have a cell phone policy, uh, kind of a little bit shared, so I'm gonna skip this. Video and uh, audio recording, you don't need to do because I'm recording here, okay? I'm recording and providing later. Title uh, nine policy, if you have any situation with Title nine sexual violence, you can call 417-836-8506 or zealpatterson at missourystate.edu. Religious accommodation will be done, right? Uh, and Emergency situations, for example, tornado. I don't know whether in the in the era of COVID pandemic, if we have a tornado, you know, tornado situation, we have to all gather together in the 
in a shelter? <laughs> um, that's a question mark, but we'll get, uh, if I know more about this, I'll just update it. But as of now, we have tornado shelter, second floor shelter in, in Terra Lab. That means during the you know, tornado, we stay inside Temple Hall 244. You're not going anywhere. You're not gonna allow anybody in because we are capacity, 50% capacity. And uh, uh, if we have to evacuate because of fire and gas leak, we go to library, main entrance, or you know, outside of the you know, library. How about area of rescue? There is no facility in this uh, building. Right. So these are the summary of our syllabus. And so we're gonna go back here. We're done with lab syllabus. And now we'll talk about safety policy. Eventually I need you to sign and turn it in by next week. You, you could probably turn it in in hand, you know, in hand, or you can turn it in through Blackboard, but we prefer you turn it in through Blackboard. So I don't need to read these all through, but few key things I'm gonna go through, okay? So one of the most important thing is this, washing your hands as often as possible and treat your hand sanitizer as often as possible, right? And use a paper towel or a disinfectant towel or disinfectant, a soaked paper towel as often possible wiping on your desk. That's our general rule of thumb for this in-person class. That's all about this section, right? Okay. And then we go here, next part is uh, lab safety policy, main part of it. You're not gonna eat and or nor drink. And recommend you to wear closed toed shoes and pants. Because just in case you, you spill your materials, biohazard material on your feet, you don't want. If you have a lab coats, please wear your lab coats. We have some extra coats, but it's always better if you bring and wear your own coats. I wanna ask you a question. Uh, how many of you have uh, lab coats? Uh, you might wanna give reaction, uh, such as thumb up, or put, show your hands, using your reaction. You don't? Okay. Yeah, we have some extra. We will, you know, we have a very clean lab coat. Okay, so, and how about, uh, I'm gonna jump into here, number six, protective eye goggles. You may, if you have, please bring. And uh, uh, we're gonna jump on number eight. If you have happened to have a broken glassware, you have to put those broken one into designated kind of box, right? I will tell you about this again next week. Uh, so because right now we don't know, we don't know where the specific glassware box is. I'll just tell next week. And how about here? When you get injury, obviously we have some first aid, but eventually you wanna to go to a major center, major health clinic. And if you spill some important, you know, or biohazard material, right away report me so that I can handle that. Pipetting, I'll give you some, you know, uh, practice. Uh, uh, I'll give you some uh, demonstration next week about how to use pipette particularly long plastic pipettes. Today we'll give you a little bit of introduction about micro pipettes, how to use it. Uh, and when you have somehow spilled some materials and you wanna use disinfectant or we will prepare 70% ethanol that you're gonna wipe in your desktop. And whenever you do some experiment, I always rec recommend you to use, you know, kind of markers and labeling your name and name of experiment date and section number. And what else? 
uh, discarding laboratory waste. This will be actually talking one more time next week, all right? Because we have some specific details here. And leaving the lab, when you're ready to leave, you have to probably wipe down your desk. That's what we are talking about. Okay, so finally we arrive here. This is 1032. Most likely we'll finish before uh, 1150. Uh, I don't know when exactly, but it's not gonna be until 1050. So main topic of today class is lab uh, covering basic lab technique and biosafety training. Uh, so in the middle of my talk, if you have any questions, please let me know, right? Okay. So lab objectives I want to cover. Uh, my goal is this. After you finish up today's lab, you should be able to get the main concept of these things, and you should be able to practically make specific solutions, such as molar solutions, percent solutions, and how, you know, you should be able to dilute uh, stock solution, which is highly concentrated. And you should be able to uh, solve practical questions shown in your lab handout, particularly page 10 and 11, so that you are able to do your lab homework to be submitted through Blackboard. And after this class, you know that what, what are the homeworks other homeworks, and you know, you know, eventually submitting those stuff through Blackboard. Okay, so let's talk about first thing first. First thing that I want to talk about is purple. I know you guys heard of this purple throughout biology 121 and also chemistry 160, 170, all those courses. But in biology, purples are solutions that combine with or release hydrogen ions. So the, the main goal of purple in vitro test tube system, whether you talk about in vitro or in vivo system, the main goal of buffer is to minimize the fluctuation of hydrogen ion concentration. In other words, minimize the change of a pH in the system. Just thinking about a situation where in biological system, like a in vivo, like your body system, if pH fluctuating between five and 10, five and 10 pH are not five difference. It's, you know, 10 to the power of a five difference. So it's drastic amount of hydrogen ion concentration different. It'll cause proteins are denatured, DNAs and all biomolecules that are kind of a working horses are actually shutting down their activities. This will cause cellular death. So maintaining the pH constant is one of the important biological goal in your body system. So that will be done by a buffer, right? Or buffers. So let's move on. So there are two types of in our class buffers that we are practice to make. One, the first buffer is percent solution. So you might want to know the definition of percent solution, very straightforward. It, it is an exact concentration of a solute, whether it's NaCl or KCl or whatever, sugar, certain gram of solute is solubilized in 100 ml of solution, not one liter. So it's 100 ml. So basically, if I say this, particularly the by weight, so weight in enough solvent uh, to make 100 ml solution. For example, like this, how to make 5% of sodium chloride in 100 ml? What well, this is world easy. Because I said, you just weigh five gram, solubilize in 100 ml, that's 5%, right? But we have some other situations. So that's why I'm preparing this video. So let's, let's hear about this video and watch it. From now on, I will talk about how to make the same solution. So I you have to know the definition of a percent solution. A solution is defined as a specific amount of solute 
is solubilized in 100 ml of water. So, for example, in order to make these percent of NaCl, you don't need to know its molecular weight. So, basically, 3% of NaCl in 100 ml would be made by weighing 3 grams of NaCl and then solubilize this solute in total volume of 100 ml. That's 3%. It's so easy. But what if you ask to make 3% of NaCl in 10 ml, not 100 ml? Then you're going to use it here. 3 grams NaCl, 100 ml. But your final volume is 10 ml. So you write in 10 ml here. In order to cancel this and what zero, end up 0.3 gram. Here, when you make 100 ml, it's a big gram. So, how about the question is like how to make 3% of NACL in one liter? So then you may say 3 gram NACL in 100 ml, but the total volume is one liter. Do not write one liter here. You don't write one liter. You have to convert one liter into 1,000 ml. So that cancel all zeros here. Now you get 10 times 3, so you're making 30 gram. So once you figure out this specific number, what you have to do, you have to weigh this amount, as I did in the molar solution, using label and spoon, and then you pour into the beaker, and then you add the final volume. But you start to the lower than the final volume always, and then you adjust to the final volume. Okay, so, so now you have some uh, examples. So in the exam, uh, you will see these kind of questions. You know, we'll give sometime unit liter, sometime we give milliliters. So you should be able to convert everything milliliters, right? I just want to make sure that. And then second type of solution that we are practicing today through online is making molar solutions. I think you heard of this definition of molar solution is this one liter of solution, not one liter, not 100 ml, uh, of so a solution contains the number of grams of solute equal to its molecular weight. So for example, if you want to make one molar solution of sodium chloride, first thing you have to know is molecular weight. Its molecular weight is 58.46. Then it's so easy. Well, basically you weigh 58.46 gram of NaCl in a weigh board, and then you add a certain amount of water less than 1,000, like 800 milliliter, and then you solubilize, and then you add a little bit of water gradually, and then if you see 1,000 1, ml, you stop it. And then you label it. That's actually one molar NaCl solution, right? So uh, whether you making whatever the you know, solution, whether it's mono or diabasic, potassium phosphate, if you know molecular weight, it's so easy in case of making one molar solution, right? Let's say, you know, diabasic potassium phosphate, you know, solute molecular weight is 100. How to make it one more? 100 gram is really, right? But sometimes situations happen like, hey, instead of making one more, how about to make 0.05 more? That will be a little bit different. Before I reveal you how to making 0.05 more mono, you know, basic, potassium phosphate, I'll talk about the, you know, the difference between here, monobasic versus thiabasic, very straightforward, monobasic acid is, you know, acid, uh, in order to quench its acidity, you need a one molar base, such as Na, uh, you know, NaOH. So one molar acid and one molar base, right? So that in case, monobasic, how about thiabasic? So diabasic acid is defined as one for which one mole of acid is quenched or neutralized by two moles of base, such as uh, KOH 
and NaOH. So you see a little bit of, a little bit of difference. Okay. Now let's say now really situation. Hey, how to make uh, 50 ml of now unit is different. Before it was one liter. Now we say 50 ml. Wow. And then the molar concentration we want is 0.05. How to make this? Well, now you have a problem. You know, oh, how, how, how we do this? Well, I think uh, if you took uh, chemistry 160 and 170 or even higher level, this is probably a common type of uh, practice questions you're going to see in the exam. Well, unfortunately, even cell biology lab exam will cover this. So you must know how to make this kind of a solution, molar solutions. And, you know, I want to review, I want to reveal the how to making this kind of a solution, okay, in the next, next slide. Okay, right there. Okay, so we're going to move on next. Okay, guys, based on, on my calculator, calculation, turned out to be answer is 0 0.34 grams. So we have to weigh 0.34 grams from this bottle. This has a basic phosphate, more basic, and high dose. So what we have to do, use a spoon. We get 0.34 gram. Pretend that this is 0.34 gram. Of course, you have to use balancer to do this. But I'm gonna show it in the video. So, but pretend that this is 0.34 gram. And then what you have to do, you have to pour this solute into a beaker. Let's see this. And then now you have to pour less than 50 ml because your final volume is 50 ml. I usually start with about 30 ml in this case, about 30. And you have to basically, you know, shake in order to facilitate solubilization of this powder. And now you, you pretend that these are all solubilized, dispersed into the, completely homogenized into the solution. Then you add more water so that you see the 50 ml mark here. We add more. Right there. So eventually you're making 50 ml, 0.05 mole KH2PO4 solution. Once you're making it, you have to write it here. 
one of the key points of the experiment is related. So you can say PHEO4.05 more. Okay, good slide. All right, so, <clears throat> and then our next movement here. So far, if you have any questions, please let me know in terms of making molar solution and percent solutions. Okay, so far so good, wonderful. So we are approaching very quickly to the, the last third of the lecture here. So micro pie patterns. So, you know, particularly when you uh, do some uh, experimental, you know, uh, approaches, whether you in a microbiology lab or whether you are in a ecology lab, you know, most likely you, you will be experiencing use of this micro pipettes, particularly handling small uh, uh, volumes, such as one micro, 10, 100, 1,000 micro, right? I think a vast majority of you probably have a practice, but rarely I have some students, they never ever used micro pipettes. But I'm telling you one more time, the main purpose of using this micro pipettes, instead of using typical, you know, macro version of uh, pipettes, is handling small, tiny volume, micro unit of volumes, right? One micro means 10 to the power of negative six. So it's really tiny. So I think you, this course, Biology 320, Cellular and Molecular Biology, will use this micro pipettes throughout the semester when you come to the in-person lab. So you have to know how to use this micro pipettes, right? So we have three types of micro pipettes. P20, P means pipettes, P20, P200, and P1000. And I think here, uh, Hushwip uh, Rizvanovic, actually he served as TA last semester and he helped us making uh, this uh, video. So you wanna see this general rules of thumb using micropipetters. Hmm? All right, friends, for a quick crash course on using the micropipetters, let's go over what we have here today. So we're gonna have three micropipetters that we'll use in the lab. The first one is the P1000. You can always check to see the range here. This one will go from 100 microliters to 1000 microliters. This one, the P200, will go to 20 microliters to 200 microliters. And then you have the P20, which will go from two microliters to 20 microliters. And they'll all have different designated tip boxes, so make sure you're using the correct tip. Uh, general rule of thumb, whenever you're trying to grab a pipette tip, you'll open the box and you'll just uh, a little firmly uh, make sure you press the micro pipette into the tip, but don't jam it in, otherwise you'll just bend the bottom of the tip. Make sure after you've grabbed your tip to close the box, you don't want whatever's floating in the air getting inside the rest of the tip. Secondly, if you're going to pipette um, any amount of solution, so for example, in this exercise for pipetting 750 microliters, you would set the P1000 to 076, designating that you're at 750 microliters. Uh, the big red zero is saying, uh, that we're not at a thousand. If it was one zero zero, you would be at a thousand, not one hundred microliters. So just be very mindful of that. The pipette will go down to the first click of the mic micro pipetter. You don't want to go down all the way. You should feel two stopping points. So just go down to the first click, stop up, and then that should be the correct amount. Whenever you're pipetting into things, make sure you don't have any air bubbles or any sort of disturbance within this. You want to just see a nice clear uh, solution here. Uh, to expel the contents of your tip, you want to go down to the first click as well. You very rarely will need to go all the way to the second click. And make sure once you've gone down to that second click that you raise your pipette out of solution before going back up, because otherwise you'll pipette in and it just suck it right back up. That could be very problematic if you were to gel or something like that. Thank you. So, um, you know, our TAs, uh, me and uh, Hushrib and myself, and we did uh, practice and then we actually made a video to sh you know, entertain you guys. And uh, we tried to actually measure accuracy of our pipetting, you know, practices. So what we did was like this. So we call it micro pipetters marathon, 
So we had uh, three members in our group. But if this were real in a lab situation, we have a, a member of a whole student practice this kind of stuff. So basically, every individual will be suck up, suck up 700, you know, 60 microliters using P1000 and then transfer to a weigh boat and do five times. So I do five times, Min does five times, and then Hushuk does five times, something like that, and add up all things. And then uh, we do 46 microliters and eight microliters five times per person. And then we eventually calculate you know, percent average or percent error, which can be calculated by actual amount. Actual amount is certain amount that we did it. Estimated amount is theoretical value, right? And divided by uh, estimated and then times 100% will give you percent error. So, uh, so before I'm talking about you know, showing the video, we have to know this kind of information here. When you convert volume into weight using always this, one ml of water is basically equal to one gram of water. Right? So keeping this information in mind, watch this video. I'll entertain you a little bit. We want to start a pipette marathon. So basically, today our job is pipetting up 760 microliter five times, and then 46 microliters five times, and eight microliters five times per person. If you have three members, then you do five times three times. So I'll do first with 760. So press down, not to the bottom, but first stop. One, two, three, four, five, 46 by time. One, two, three, four, five, eight micro five time. One, two, three, four, five. Now, push me, please come forward. Oh, we're still going, we're still going. Five times. All right, so 765 times. So one, two, three, four, and five. Beautiful. Okay, so now 46 five times. One, two, three, four, and five, and eight five times. One, two, three, four, five. Man, we're gonna tag you in. Don't press two because you press too tight, so it's okay. So this much, okay. this much. Okay. A little bit, when you suck it up, a little bit slow. So we did it this way. We're gonna stop it here <clears throat> and then move our kind of breakdown here. All right, guys. I think uh, we did pipetting marathon and then I'm gonna show you the breakdown. So we did 760 microliter five times. We have three people, so let's do three times. So you get 11,400 microliter. So if you convert this into the gram, it will be 11.4 gram. Likewise, the using
the medium aggregate, we get 690 microliters. And then with the smallest aggregate we have, we eventually get 140 microliters. That's our estimated value. So if I add up all these three you know, values together, it will be 4,210 microliters. If you convert that into gram, it'll be 12.21 gram. This is estimated, right? But practically, after we did, obviously, we always have a pattern error. Eventually, the actual weight turned out to be 13.5 gram, right? Thank you very much. So, guys, uh, <clears throat> I want to give you uh, about a minute and figure out your you know, percentage error. You have calculators, and please do calculate. Your actual value will be subtracted by your estimated value, and uh, all of these will be divided by estimated value times 100%, right? So let's go back to here. Uh, well, <clears throat> your last value, I wanna go. All right, guys, I think Uh, let's go a little bit quicker right, here around there. If you convert that there you into go. gram. So your estimated value is 12.21 uh, gram. Your actual value is 13.5 gram. So let's calculate this. So the actual value will be subtracted by estimated value. So uh, that will give you 1.3 basically, right? Nearly 1.3. So 1.3 will be divided by your estimated value, which is 12.21. So what will be the answer? 1.3 divided by 12.21. Anybody have a calculator? It's 10.6%. Oh, 10.6%. <clears throat> so that's actually what really happened here. You know, if you know the percent error, this is very important. When you're writing a paper, right, a kind of to submit a professional journal, you have to, in your method section, you have to indicate this kind of percent error in order to the readers and audience will know the accuracy of your data. That's why we, you know, kind of sometimes uh, calculating percent error. And <clears throat> long, you know, pipette practice we'll do next week. So we're not gonna do it here, skipping it. So move on. The last section of this lecture will be dilution. <clears throat> when you go to the laboratories, uh, experimental laboratories, like my lab or Dr. Yudan and some other labs, you go there right open, you know, right away, open the door of the lab, you will see the shelves, you know, chemical shelves, like barrels and all those it will be staying like a 20x, 50x, 100x, and something like that. You may say, hey, why are you guys making those, you know, 100x and 50x? Well, first of all, you're not basically, you know, save your space, right? You don't want to make a 100x in 1x, like a really, really big volume that takes care, you know, cover all those lab space. You don't want to do that. So making kind of stock solution is very, you know, uh, useful. So, but the question is this. Now you have a really highly concentrated stock solutions. How to make uh, diluted solutions? I think you might practice this kind of you know uh, stuff in maybe chemistry, but actually in cell bio, this is very fundamental and important kind of skills that you you have to know. So to do so, you have to know the one equation here: C I V I equals C F V F. C here is concentration. V here is volume. So I means initial. Initial means your stock solution, right? So if you know concentration of your stock solution, and also if you know your final F means final, final concentration and final volume, you should be able to figure out your initial volume, the volume of the, your stock highly concentrated solution, right? So let's move on. And I think we have situation like this. Hey, how to make uh, 10 ml of one uh, X, bromophenol blue out of 15x bromophenol blue. 
Here we have a video. Hello guys. Now uh, I'm gonna reveal you the secret of how to make a uh, diamond sausage from the scotch. And when you go through the lab, you may be able to see something like this kind of bottle, 15 x raw milk in your food. For that means that 15 times higher concentrated than raw food solution. All right. One 10 ml of one x from a field of blue out of 15 x. Well, I would strongly recommend you use this kind of equation for the dilution. Pi pi equals p x p x. Here I need initial, and then f is initial is your stop. So now you should be able to calculate. Initial or start concentration is 15x, and then your volume that you want to calculate how much ml of the start you need to make final concentration of 1x. What volume? 10ml. Right? So what happens is 15x equals 10ml. So your goal is figuring out x. So x equals 10ml. 10 over 15 ml, right? So that's what you get. And then next turned out to be 0 0.6, 6, 6, 6, da, 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 whatever. So then, oh, you know that of this ml of stock solution, of, in this case, 15 x from PNO2, you need it. So I use this, my pen, P200, set up 66. Well, a 0 0.6666 like that. So I'm going to take this 15x, as you see this, take it out, and then you put this 1x chrome uh, kilo blue, uh, oil cat uh, small bottle, or big bottle, and then you put this, and then what you're going to do, pour a 9 point whatever. The final value should be 10. So I add water. That's until you make the 10. So at one time I make the total 10. So like this. And then you shake it, right? I already labeled it. So it, this is how you make it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so uh, given that we covered, you know, how to make molar and percent solution and dilution and that kind of stuff, now your lab homework will be page 10 and 11 of your left hand out. Let me see your, our blackboard. It's there, right here. So if you're looking at blackboard, you'll be able to download your left hand out here. So if you click that, you get the left hand out right there. And if you go down uh, really, the, really the last page, or almost last page, right? 10, right there. Page 10. And 11, you get a lot of questions up to probably nine questions. So if you love to writing using your pen and writing on paper, you're using <clears throat> genius scan and scan it and then submit it to, you know, a Blackboard, or you could type it here in Word and submit your Word document too. Either way, it should be okay. And then once you submit it, and mean will be grading. So that. <clears throat> And uh, let's go back to our PowerPoint. PowerPoint. <clears throat> so once you're submitting, your grade point will be zero to five. What else? Biosafety training, as I already told you. If you're looking at page six to 10 of the lab handout, you have some guide for how to enroll in this and you need to go through this. There are actually several modules in this uh, city biosafety tra training. So you should be able to uh, pass this by uh, having done your quizzes. I think you, I think you have to get 75 or 85 percent correct in order to get the certificate. And certificate will be also submitted to right here, right there, by safety training certificate. Uh, <clears throat> and city training, that's it. And everything, you should be turned it in by August 25th, right? So far, 
throughout this lecture, I think uh, I achieved um, all my goals that I'm, I'm delivering main information that you should be able to do homework and the main concept that covering MOLA and percent solution all those. Uh, let me know if you have any question right now. Any questions? <clears throat> I think you guys are very much cooperating in, in first class and I don't know whether you experience any uh, connectivity issues and uh, uh, particularly when I, uh, you know, uh, kind of running the videos and whether video was some delayed or something, uh, please let me know so that we can improve uh, for the future. Okay, so otherwise I'm gonna first of all stop sharing here and then I wanna stop recording.